So, um, in Einstein's theory of gravity, a black hole um, is, is predicted to occur. Basically, you have so much mass in one point that the gra- you know, the, the tendency for the thing to collapse is overwhelms any uh, opposing force to support the, the thing, so it just collapses to a point. Now, once that happens, the only three properties you can measure for a black hole would be its mass, um, an electrical charge, if it has one, and then how fast it's spinning. And so basically, you, it's, you can't directly think of it in terms like, you know, a spinning top, but if you could, um, roughly speaking, you'd see 800 turns per second. And so the idea is that if a black hole is not spinning, it affects space differently compared to if it is spinning. And so that difference affects how the, um, when the matter falls in the hole, and, and right before it falls in the hole, it gets very high and it makes it, it emits x-rays. And, the spectrum that you see from the x-rays changes depending on how fast the black hole is spinning. So it's quite fast, and it's near its maximum allowed rate, in fact. Systems like black hole, or um, Cygnus X1, represent sort of the ultimate fate of the most massive stars, and this, these new measurements sort of give us some insights into that formation process.